Maury, Maury even commented on the uh, on the depth that we have uh, with the on the rights to Ricky Sanchez podcast uh, yesterday. Uh, quote: Nick's really got his work cut out for him because I don't know who to play with our crew. Generally, it's best to play nine or ten at most. Nick's even talking about playing a wider group. So my question to you is: I mean, hearing that uh, from our from Maury. Do you this is one of the deepest teams in the league right now? And it, and is this one of the deepest uh, 76ers teams that we've had in uh, in quite some time? Yeah, this probably probably is. Um it's a deep team. Um I let me say I do feel that we're deep, but I don't feel that we are that deep because I feel a lot of players should be stacked on top of each other. I Meaning they're they're very similar. So you're playing – some of the guys are uh, – what they give you are very similar style of play, so there's no need to play many of those guys. So I don't need to name who who should be stacked, but in my opinion, um, you have 11 or maybe 11 or so guys that's capable of being in the rotation. Um, but, I, but I do not see how – maybe you can get away with 10. Um, nine is, is, is best – in my opinion, and eight in the playoffs with that nine being his minutes being, you know, a roller coaster. Um, I, I, I just don't know. I said, I think I said it the last show. I don't, I don't last show. I don't know how he's going to make that happen. I, I think as the season goes on, that will be determined. Um, who's going to fit, who's the best fit, what, what you're looking for. Um, but guys, guys obviously are going to have to make sacrifices because some of the guys that we're talking about, their, their roles, it's going to come down to who can make the spot up three, who can, who's versatile defensively, um, who takes care of the basketball, like uh, who's helping us rebound. Like it's guys are going to have to be open to um, doing different things and making sacrifices, and at the same time being consistent in whatever it is your job and responsibility is. What would you say is the main drawback, Eric, to having such a deep, wide, wide range of players playing every night and just stretching it out? Do you think like guys don't get enough burn just because it? They well, still I mean, I league? think that. I mean, obviously, your your main players are going to get their minutes is going to be consistent. So, is it is it best to give two guys six or seven minutes, or one guy 13, 14 minutes? That, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, um, and most guys want that 13, 14 minutes because some six or seven minutes you come in and all of a sudden the team go on the run and those are your six seven minutes you can look worse. You know what I'm saying? Like so now you're, you're losing, yeah. you're getting frustrated, confidence. So it's hard for guys to get a rhythm and get confidence if as soon as they get in before you know. Like when you're in there, those six seven minutes go fast. It may not go fast on the clock, but it does go fast. You know, so. Um, it's it's kind of hard to to say, but I, I I just don't I just don't think that that you can do it. I just don't think you can cut the minutes down. I think you have to be more more consistent with that. Um, as far as the play, I I would rather you just kind of like maybe rotate guys into that spot more than playing eleven, splitting 12, it, twelve guys. Or, so or, like, no, or maybe one guy play. Like, yeah, you kind of find, until you find who you want. You you slot those minutes and then put a different guy in there. Mm-hmm. Each time and, and try to find what's the best mix instead of playing right. guys five or so minutes and then trying to because it, it's not it's not consistent to how it's really going to look. I think you need a full look of how those minutes are going to go in order to really judge it. But if if a guy's playing. Say, for instance, a guy plays five minutes with Joel, and then he plays five minutes without Joel. That could look differently. Yeah. Five minutes with Maxi and five minutes without Maxi. You know what I'm saying? So you just it's just so hard to judge and gauge when it's not always fair or necessarily the same. So you mean like Batum, play Batum like 22 minutes one game, and then the next game maybe give Marcus Morris like 22 minutes instead of giving them both like 11 yeah, no, in both I, games? I'm just saying like if, if – I, I believe that you have your nine guys that you're sold on. I believe that it, you can go in and, and it's hard for me to believe that they don't know which nine guys they want pretty much to be their guy. Maybe the ninth guy is 
you're deciding between three guys for the ninth guy. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're deciding between three guys for the 10th guy. Maybe you're having a, you know, confusional, which one you want to be that guy, but then you kind of decide between those guys and kind of split up the minutes based on those particular guys, not hurting the minutes of everyone else. Now, I don't think it should be a your game, my game. I think it should be fewer guys. Say for instance, you got say for instance, you got 39 minutes for one spot or or 35 minutes for one spot. Maybe you split those up into two a game instead of three or four a game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And then like maybe the next game, if you're still unsure yes. about who should get it, maybe take one, one guy out, have another guy. guy. Yes, slide into that 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 two guys and get and you kind of figure it out. Um, but and, and a lot of this could be handled in practice. They just don't practice as much as they used to. I mean, practice will help kind of determine it all. Training camp would have helped determine it all. Yeah, um, as yeah. well. You didn't have a training camp, so it's almost like figure it out on the fly. And I'm just saying, like, in order to get a real look at a guy, like five minutes in the game is not going to do it. That's all I'm saying. Like it. Yeah. I know guys are supposed to perform with the minutes that you get, but if if, if the guys are getting five minutes, it's 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 not really a true judgment. Unless you're Roko getting three steals, a block, and a three pointer in four minutes, man. <laughs> Talk about filling it up with a little bit of time you're there. Yeah. That's that's um I mean it's I think it's most likely, yeah, it's definitely the deepest team in, in Embiid's time. Um, going through all those, I, I quickly did it. So you have the Bellinelli, Ilyasova, Bayless period coming off the bench as our first three guys. The Jimmy Butler years, you have like Greg Monroe and James Ennis as like your top two guys off the bench. Um, Fur, and then it went like Furcon, Shake, and Alec Burks for that year. I think that was the I think that was the bubble year, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then like the Shake, Matisse, and Furk. And then I guess the most comparable we, when we had like to that, I think 21 team, like the Niang and Shake, it's pretty good. We have a good shooter off the bench, but still, like, compared to now, where you have Beverly, Batum, Reed, Morris, Covington, even Springer, and Korkmaz. Cork- Korkmaz playing great right now. I mean, he was like our second man off the bench for like two, three years in a row. And he's like our, you know, we don't have to play him until like nine or 10 if we don't want to. But um, other teams with good depth, I just looked up real fast. The Pistons have pretty good depth. Um, they have like they have Monte Morris, Jay Nivey, Alec Burks, and um, Bogdanovich probably will be coming off the bench because they probably won't bench their young guys at this point. Um, Warriors have good depth. The Nets have really good depth. They were, when they're going to be at full health, they're going to have like Royce O'Neal, Cam Thomas, Dorian Finney Smith, Lonnie Walker coming off the bench. That's pretty good. Um, the Lakers, too, obviously, they're not having as much success, but when they're at full strength, you know, Gabe Vincent, Torian Prince, Christian Wood. Probably either Vanderbilt or Hachimura, probably Vanderbilt come off the bench. But yeah, I think we're right up there at the top. I mean, granted, I expect us to do maybe a consolidation trade where you trade right like, two of those guys that we have come off the bench to get like, you know, our our guy, our starter back. But um I think for I think this season we're gonna have good depth. Even even if we do we're so deep right now, we can afford to do a, a two or three for one and still have really good depth the rest of the season. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. Based on Maury's comments in that podcast, it doesn't sound like he's making any moves anytime soon. He says he's going to he's going to stand pat till he sees it, it, the right deal, and he's going to let these guys play since they're playing so well as of right now. Obviously, yeah. really early in small sample size. Um, but when he says Eric, when he says uh, generally it's best to play nine or ten at most, he said Nick's even talking about playing a wider group. Does that mean he's going to go all twelve guys for, on, in, the, in the rotation? I mean, that sounds kind of playing a wider group from nine no or idea. ten. I have I, I, I have no idea what, what, what that means that um as far as doing it in my mind it just it it tells me that they're not sure who that was nine guys are. That, that's the only reason I would think that if you're sitting up here saying that we prefer nine but we're we may play eleven, that means you don't have your nine secure. That, yeah. That's how I, that's what I get from it. Um you, you're just not secure which which guys is going to be um, and you're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. We played 15 last night. 15 guys played last night? Yeah. 
Last night, yeah, that don't surprise me, you know, with the way the game went and Joel not playing in the third quarter. Like, that that don't surprise me. It, it's, it's you know, the next game, you know, if you're trying to, you know, see how that go and Boston playing a, be tighter, a, a tighter game going into the end of the game and tighter game. A game is tight almost the whole game and back and forth and, you know, pretty much stays within six points. Or so that that's going to tell you a lot as far as what he believes, how he trusts, people and who we trust and that that's going to tell you more as we get more games like that yeah we had seven different guys with a block yesterday damn pretty good yeah it's a long team yeah 